Hi everyone, I'm Jackie and we are enjoying life's journey while on the path to financial freedom. If you're not familiar with my channel, I make videos on goal setting, personal finance, and a little bit about our minimalist lifestyle. So if you're interested in any of those, please consider subscribing. Today I wanted to talk about Dave Ramsey's baby step number three. Now I've already talked about all seven baby steps, so I have a separate video on that if you guys want to check that out. I also made a video on three things to consider or think about before, or three things to do before starting his baby steps. I've gone over baby step one, which is to save $1,000 as a starter emergency fund, and I've gone over baby step two, which is to pay off all of your debt using the debt snowball. So today, baby step three is to save the rest of your emergency fund, okay? Baby step three can actually be put into two parts though. We have baby step 3A, which is to save your emergency fund, and 3B, which is to save the down payment for your house if you do not already own a house. So today I'm gonna to talk about both of those really quick and then I'm going to do like I've done in the other videos and I'm gonna just give you a little bit of a story time on how we have accomplished those steps um, and how we plan on reaccomplishing one of them. <laughs> okay, so the first one, baby step 3A, saving for an emergency fund. How much do you need? How much do you need for an emergency fund? This could be, everyone could have a different situation. So ideally, Dave Ramsey says you wanna have at least a minimum, a minimum of three months of your living expenses as a emergency fund. Okay, so this could be different. So this is, I like to call just your regular your necessities okay so not your fun money not your savings money you know not that money how much are you spending every month on your necessities on your you know you should be out of debt by now so you shouldn't have any debt payments but how much are you just paying on your necessities your rent your electricity your food your transportation like gas maintenance things like that how much are you spending every month times that by three that would be your spare minimum of a emergency fund the other option he mentioned is doing six months of your living expenses as an emergency fund. So let's just use some easy numbers here. If your living expenses were $1,000 a month, you would either save $3,000 or you would save $6,000. There are other financial gurus out there that might actually say that you wanna save a year's worth um, as an emergency fund. Some people even save two years. They wanna have that much cash liquid in a sense they want to have access to that much cash where they that's what they feel comfortable with so it's all going to come honestly it's going to come down to what you feel comfortable with now we have saved the three months before which was about five thousand dollars for us because at the time our our monthly expenses were about sixteen hundred a month one thousand six hundred so we saved about five thousand dollars as our emergency fund now that we have kind of reached that number and fallen back a few times um, we agreed that we want more, that we would feel more comfortable having more. Now we're in a new house, so we're really not sure what our monthly expenses look like yet. So my husband and I just agreed that we would feel comfortable having $10,000 put aside specifically for emergencies, okay? We are going to be saving other things, um, like a car replacement and some other things on the side that could potentially be an emergency that we will be saving for separately car maintenance house maintenance we will be saving in addition to our emergency fund okay so that's some things to think of okay so how where are we at with that step and how did we get there so we paid off all of our debt in 2016 so then we are on to baby step 3a saving the emergency fund we had a tax refund that same time so we basically made our last debt payment and we had our full emergency fund um, right out the gate basically we are right there with that well we chose to sell our motorcycles and purchase an RV with cash and to travel and work full-time work camping and travel full-time in the RV so we started that in August those who followed the journey we we ended up having a lot of issues with the RV so we ended up spending about half of our emergency fund the first two weeks we were on the road we got to our first work camping job. We were able to replenish our emergency fund. Again, we only did three months worth of emergency at that time. Then we went from the sugar beet harvest and we went and we did a job working um, for Amazon. And there we basically were working so we did not have to touch our emergency fund. 
and that was fine then from there we went to my brother's house in texas this is where the rv basically showed signs that it was totally just it was crap uh, we decided at that time that we were basically taking about we were going to live off of our emergency fund for a couple months uh, before going to get another work camping job and then when tax time came we were going to again replace the emergency fund so that's kind of what we ended up doing so we reached our emergency fund first in 2016 we had to spend some we got it back up we had to spend some you know and then we we were stuck where we didn't have it again so at that point we decided when we got our tax refund we had the option of trying to put everything we had into fixing the rv um, or just heading back to arizona so we decided that you know it, it just it wasn't working out for us um, unfortunately we decided to come back to arizona so we were able to save some of that tax refund again as an emergency fund well at this time we were homeless so we actually ended up spending a good majority of our emergency fund living in hotels uh, until Ricky got a job and we were able to get into an apartment and then we had to use some of that money for the deposits and move-in costs for the apartment. So we've gone back and forth. I feel like we've been stuck on baby step three since 2016. Honestly, you guys, <laughs> we just keep going back and forth. Uh, finally, when we got our tax refund at the beginning of this year, 2018, we had our fully funded, we, we had our fully funded emergency fund again of the, the $5,000 and then we decided you know we don't have a house we decided that full-time RVing wasn't for us and that we'd go ahead and start saving for baby step 3b which is a down payment for the house now baby step 3b it might seem like okay you save for a down payment for the house so how much do you need to purchase a house now this depends on who you talk to as well Dave Ramsey recommends that you at least put 10% down and that you try to do a 15 year mortgage. If you can put 20% down, that's even better because then you don't have private mortgage insurance, um, things like that. For us, we actually ended up purchasing a house with only 5% down. So we do have the private mortgage insurance, um, but our goal is to pay as pay off the house as fast as we can. So that will go away pretty quickly as well. How long did it take us? So we started putting money aside specifically for the down payment of the house. Basically for us, our down payment, like I said, we did 5% down. All right, so we purchased our house for $165,000. So 5% was basically $8,250. So that's how much we needed. We, Ricky started working a ton of overtime, so we were able to save almost $1,000 a month. Some, some months we were only able to save, you know, maybe 500 or so, but we had some really good months in there. So we started saving for that, specifically for savings for about five months for the down payment of the house. So that's roughly how long it took us to do that, but we ended up spending all of our emergency fund except for about 1,200. Huh. So, but we did it. So we finished baby step 3B, we purchased our house. So that is done. So now we're back to 3A. We're gonna replace the, like I said, we're gonna replace our emergency savings. We decided that three months was not enough because as you can see, it kept being spent and replenished and spent and replenished and it's just, I'm tired of that whole roller coaster. And our goal, like I said, we decided we're gonna go ahead and shoot for $10,000. So that's going to take us, if we were only to work on my husband's income, that will probably take us to the end of 2019 to reach it. And the reason being is we're gonna start investing, like we started investing 3% and um, Dave Ramsey mentions like not to do baby steps four, five, or six until you're done with three, but um, we're gonna go ahead and just start doing everything at the same time. So it's a little bit different. Also, I've decided to pick up a side hustle with Instacart to deliver groceries to people. Um, so anything I make from that will be to help us reach that goal of saving that $10,000 faster. So we're hoping that maybe by the middle of 2019, we'll have our $10,000 saved and we can officially move on to baby step four, which is to start investing 15% of your income for your retirement, okay? So that basically, that's kind of the story of, you know, we've just been going in and out. So we haven't really been too consistent of really saving. We've always used like a lump sum of money to fund it, and except for finally like this year, I feel like we finally 
have got in the habit of actually saving money when we were saving for the down payment for the house. So now I feel confident um, that moving forward, it's gonna be a lot easier for us to reach that number um, faster than the first time because we're actually putting in the work now. When you start putting in the work and you don't just save a lump sum, um, it's easier for you to keep it um, because you don't wanna spend it as much because you worked a lot harder for that money. I hope that makes sense. That's baby step 3A and 3B, kind of in a nutshell, what it is, Again, it's gonna be your personal preference of how much money you wanna put down on a house, how much you wanna have as an emergency fund, but those are just some general ideas to think about. That's kind of our story of, of what we did and, and what we plan on doing um, to finish out that baby step. But join me next time, I'm going to be talking about baby step four um, and kind of you know what we're gonna be investing in and things like that. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.